Mazda CX-60 aims to establish its brand in the premium part of the upper mid-sized SUV segment. In this, it'll be aided by sharp driving dynamics, a refreshing, different and rather classy cabin, and the option of a PHEV powertrain with a 39-mile driving range. It's more affordable than obvious rivals, better equipped, and really rather different. Mazda has correctly identified that with a couple of exceptions, upper mid-sized SUVs are generally pretty uninspiring to drive. So enormous efforts have been made here to deliver something a bit more engaging, or at least as engaging as a two-ton crossover is ever going to be. This CX-60 stiff new Skyactiv multi-solution scalable architecture platform helps here. Plus, to that new chassis, the engineers have built in the clever corner stabilising system lately added to the MX-5 sports car. Mazda calls it kinetic posture control. It all sounds quite promising, particularly as the engines are new too, all of them in typical Mazda style bucking the industry trend for low capacity sizing and turbocharged tech. All are linked to a freshly developed 8-speed auto gearbox which ditches the usual torque converter in favour of a multi-plate clutch and an integrated electric motor generator. Most customers will want the four-cylinder plug-in hybrid model we're trying here, which mates a 2.5-litre petrol engine to a 175 PS electric motor powered by a 17.8 kilowatt hour battery, which when fully charged offers an EV driving range of up to 39 miles. The system output, distributed to all four wheels via an on-demand all-wheel drive system, is 327 PS, the highest of any Mazda yet made, and enough to get you to 62 miles an hour in just 5.8 seconds. It's also enough to give some credence to the brand's claim that this car puts the Sport back into SUV. And though slightly vague steering prevents it from claiming overall class honours in that regard, the CX-60 comes close. This PHEV's efficiency stats stack up to a 188.3 mpg combined cycle fuel figure, expect diesel light returns in the real world, and a 33 gram per kilometre CO2 reading, which puts this car into the 12% benefiting kind taxation bracket. If you don't want your CX-60 to be a PHEV, two other engines are available, both of them non-plug-in power plants. The 3.0-litre E Skyactiv X petrol and the 3.3-litre E Skyactiv D diesel, the latter available in rear-driven as well as all-wheel drive forms. Both are large capacity six-cylinder units and each also features electrification, but it's of the much less significant mild hybrid kind. You'd certainly recognise this as a Mazda, which might not necessarily be a good thing for this car's premium aspirations, particularly as it might be mistaken for the company's mid-sized CX-5 SUV at first glance. It's actually quite a lot bigger than one of those, measuring 4,745 millimetres long, 1,890 millimetres wide and 1,675 millimetres high. The long bonnet dominates the profile perspective based around relatively rearward cabin positioning and enhanced by little details like the side gill signature trim strip below the A-pillar. The front, as you can see, is dominated by this huge grille. As on other Mazdas, little wings flow out of the top corners, but here they incorporate indicators. That same L-shaped signature features again with the horizontal LED tail lamps, which, in a refreshing change to the usual segment trend, aren't here connected by a full-width reflective strip. This, then, is how Mazda thinks a pricier, upper-mid-sized SUV should look. What will sell it to you, though, is premium cabin design. So, is that what we're going to be served up here? To some extent, yes, provided you're prepared to progress to the pricier trim levels, which get you niceties like a facial recognition feature that uses a camera to adjust seat and steering wheel position based on the driver's physique. What we like most about Mazda cabins, though, are the exemplary ergonomics, enhanced here by the way that the new slim eight-speed auto gearbox has minimised transmission tunnel width, allowing for near-ideal pedal and seat placement. 
If you're able to stretch to this top version, your eye will be drawn to the cool white Nappa leather upholstery, the pale maple wood trim and an unusual hand-stitched fabric dashboard covering, apparently inspired by Musubu, the art of Japanese binding. Across the range, the screen tech isn't as in-your-face as it usually is with expensive new models in this day and age, mainly because the 12.3-inch centre display is long and narrow, and the virtual gauges on the instrument monitor, also 12.3 inches wide, look quite realistic. Cabin storage is reasonably provided for, and Mazda's put in a great deal of effort to make forward visibility better than it usually is on a larger SUV of this kind. Right. Let's take a look in the back. Once inside, there's not the kind of significantly larger feel compared to Mazda's smaller CX-5 crossover that loyal brand customers might be hoping for. You'll find plenty of space for your feet, but only because it's so easy for them to slide beneath the front seats ahead. Unfortunately, unlike some segment competitors, Audi's Q5 for instance, that bench doesn't slide back and forth and six footers might find their hair beginning to brush the ceiling, particularly on models like this one fitted with Mazda's optional glass panoramic roof. Let's finish with a look at an area of this car that really should impress you, the boot. We've got the CX-60 in PHEV form here, a drivetrain format which with rivals usually means heavily compromised cargo capacity due to the way that the system batteries must normally be housed beneath the boot floor, not here. Once the power-operated tailgate rises, there's 570 litres of capacity on offer in this plug-in hybrid model, just the same as you'd get in the conventional diesel and petrol versions. Whether customers in this segment will view this Mazda as being properly premium, it's difficult to say. As far as we're concerned, the car itself certainly is in every way that really matters. And if you agree, you'll see this CX-60 is a decent value alternative to a posher mark rather than a slightly pricey mainstream brand alternative. It'll be a pity if all of this worthy effort is shipwrecked on the rocks of badge snobbery. Better cars than this have failed at that crucial hurdle. The CX-60, though, deserves better. Over to you.